No matter how you spin it, Auburn has to look better than that coming out of a bye week. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. It's the morning after Daryl Dabridge, Montgomery Radio vet, hanging out with us as he does, recapping every game this season. And of course, we're talking about Auburn's 48 to 18 loss, to put it kindly, at the hands of LSU. And Daryl, I think just the general feeling when we look back at what we've talked about over the last two weeks is, okay, Auburn looked good against Georgia, positive momentum going into the bye week. And then what happened Saturday night, I think was inexcusable. I I think it was pretty bad, especially the start, especially how discombobulated they looked. They didn't look ready. And then by the time the first quarter was done, it's like, okay, all right, now they've shown up, but it was too late. Once you get put in that hole, it's way too late, especially on the road at night in Bat- Baton Rouge. I mean, that's just a, a understatement to, to say that. I think, I think the yeah. problem is, and I was guilty of doing this, is that I've learned my lesson about trying to gauge, trying to project what team Auburn's going to come out and look like based upon other teams. LSU looked very vulnerable this year sometimes. Their defense was supposed to be pretty porous as far as giving up plays and yards and points. But all you got to do to remedy that is play Auburn. I'm sorry. Yeah. Where we are halfway through the year right now at 3-3, three and three, you kind of determine what you're going to be as a football team, and everybody seems to get right against Auburn. And things we look at, you know, the game against Texas A&M, for instance, Auburn – got blown out, or and you felt like, well, Texas a is a really good team. They've lost three games. Yeah. So I think there's some concern about what we thought could happen, and it's not happening, and this was Exhibit A tonight. Yeah, then you look at LSU, and you're like, man, this defense stinks. That Auburn should be able to run all over them. And I think Auburn went two full drives before they even ran the ball against this LSU team. But look, Grambling State, which is not even a state, Grambling is not a state, but th- they had 320 total yards against this LSU defense. Auburn had 293. And I know transitive mm-hmm. property in college football is not a real thing, but it kind of makes this sting a little bit worse when you just look at the ineptitude during spurts of this game on offense. The quarterback rotation that seems to be... I'm trying to think of a, a politically correct word. It just doesn't make sense. Daryl, the play calling at times doesn't make sense. The game plan at times doesn't make sense. And it's concerning that we're this far into the season. And once again, coming out of a bye week is what makes it so frustrating. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, here's the thing. I, this is this is not an indictment of what Hugh Freeze can become as a coach at Auburn and what he can do for this program. I still think he was the right man. But yeah. where we are at this point in the season, it's 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 an F. And here's why. Number one, this quarterback rotation crap. I don't know. I have been somebody that has tried to give Peyton Thorne the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I felt like he had more moxie and potential. It's not working. And the fact that when it does look like Auburn's getting some momentum and they're driving the ball, you switch back. I don't understand that. I, again, these are coaches that get paid millions of dollars that know a lot more than me. But I just look at proof of concept on the field. And, you know, you got guys tweeting out players that are hurt back home, tweeting out, put nine in. I mean, this is going to be a problem if he doesn't grab a hold of this and do what's best for the team. And that means change the offense to read option and go 2013 style and try to grind some games out, do it. But evaluation brought in and evaluation of talent once here has been poor, period. Yeah, for folks who missed for folks who missed it, Keontae Scott is who tweeted. He just tweeted out the number nine, which there's a chance he was pulling for Eugene Asante, but I don't think that was the context and the timing of when he put it out. But there's a chance. There's a chance. Right. But I, that's I, true. The, yeah. the, 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 assumption is, uh, the assumption is that he was tweeting about Robbie Ash. It was right after he scored the touchdown and then the two-point conversion. So 
uh, that that's probably it. But you're you're right. The only time they switched, and I thought it made sense, or at least where I could see where they were coming from, was at the end of the first half when they were running out of time and they wanted to put Peyton in to throw it. I guess that's the only one where I'm like, okay, I get what they're doing there. But consistently, you know, especially when like Robbie came in in the second half, I thought, okay, they're going to let him do it. And that happened in a previous game this year too. And I'm it's slipping my mind which one that would have been. I guess I would have been Texas A&M, where okay, they're going to give Robbie a shot here, and then it's third and eight, and they put Peyton back in, and then Peyton's back in to start the next drive. And it's like, what what's the plan here? What are they trying to accomplish? It just doesn't make sense. And the the problem is this: there's three schools in the country, two directional schools in Eastern and Central Michigan, and South Florida who have worse passing at offenses than Auburn right now. There is no excuse, none. I don't care if it's year one. I don't care about not having your dudes. There is no excuse for a you freeze led offense to be that poor from the passing game. When Lane Kiffin, Mike Leach, and Josh Heupel all took over their respective programs who were in the dumper when they took them over, that next year they may have only won five or six games, but you saw progression. You saw yeah. hope. You saw offense kind of come into its own a little bit, and their defense didn't didn't catch up. But at least you saw them moving the ball. Auburn offense is historically bad right now, and there's no excuse for that. If you'd have hired a defensive coach, I get it. But again, yeah. those other coaches didn't win right away, but they made it exciting, and they put points on the board. And when you saw this offense run out to the field for the first time, your starting wide receivers were Coy Moore, Rivaldo Fairweather, and uh, Caleb Burton. And it's like, okay, they changed some things up over the bye week. And that was the starting three wide receivers for the first two drives. And those guys didn't do anything. They ended up no. not doing anything. When you look at targets in the receiving game of those three guys, Caleb Burton got two targets, which resulted in two catches for 11 yards. And Rivaldo had four targets for just one catch. Rivaldo Fairweather, the consensus top pass catcher on this team, didn't catch a pass till the second to last play in the third quarter, Daryl. And it just, once again, the flow, the game plan, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, this is a team that found its offensive identity against Georgia. And all the bye week, everybody's like, yes, they can run the football. And then they come out and they don't run the football on an LSU defense. It's not good at stopping the run. And it when they did run sense. the sense, yeah, when they did run the football, there. I mean, I don't know. Auburn rushed for how many yards? One hundred ten. I don't know what they ended up with. You might have that uh, funny. But when they did try to run the football, okay. When they did try, and they threw for one hundred sixty, did they not? I mean, we predicted that. I think that was funny on the over one fifty four. One fifty four. So. I mean, they didn't run it effectively, but of course they 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 ran it in predictable running downs. I mean, I, I would have thought they again, you, you get healthy defensively when you play Auburn. And here's the frustrating part: I watched a lot of college football today, and I watched a lot of bad teams, and I did not yeah. see any team have trouble getting in open spaces with their wide receivers in passing games like Auburn. And again, yeah. that's sad, that's worrisome, and it's unacceptable. Well, once again, though, when they show these replays and Jesse Palmer called out a few of them, it's like guys are guys are open. I really don't think it's the scheme. <laughs> I yeah. think at this point it's execution, and you've got to you've got to make changes to figure out the best way to do that. I mean, if if you're going to be able to scheme two guys open on certain plays and the ball's not getting to them, whether it's an accuracy issue or he's not throwing it or he's not seeing it, which I think all three of those things happened Saturday night, that's a problem. That's a problem. All right, let's talk about the portal because I think we missed. I just think we flat out missed, and I do think there's blame to go around everywhere, but I do think the blame needs to be spread out a little bit more than it actually is. Daryl, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time is the best place to buy last-minute tickets. I went ahead and bought Auburn Ole Miss tickets last week. I probably should have waited because I bet they're not as expensive now, but that's okay. You can head over to, to Game Time. It's a free app, and when you uh, when you make your free Game Time account, use code LOCKEDONCALLS for $20 off your order. And, Daryl, I, I love just being able to see the field. Like oh, When you pull up the app, you can see what the field looks like, what your vantage point is going to look like. You can see if you're you know, 
under the the upper deck if you're going to be in the sun all day or not. It's great. It's a the great virtual feature. seating. Virtual seating is a great feature. I love that it. They have. Yeah. I don't know how they did it. I don't know if Game Time just took pictures from every seat. No clue. No clue how they did it. Magic. No, not sure. But download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest prices guaranteed. Darrell, when you look at the the portal situation, and look, they had to rebuild an offense. They had to rebuild a roster. But all the attention's on Peyton Thorne. And while I, I don't think he is what we thought he would be, boy, these receivers, they're just, they're, they're not the guys that we thought they would be. Where is Jair Shorter? Every time it's throw to Shane Hooks, it's like it's very clear that Peyton and Shane Hooks are not on the same page when it comes to timing. Caleb Burton, I thought maybe we'd see more of him. We saw him early, and then they took him out of the game. And so you just look at Nick Mardner, unfortunate timing with an injury. We saw him a little bit, but when it was thrown his way, he didn't do anything with the football. So, I mean, just all of these guys that they brought in to help support Peyton Thorne or Robbie Ashford, depending on when they committed, it... um. It's not working out. It's not working out. And and I, I Peyton's getting a lot of the blame, and I get it. He's the quarterback, and he's certainly worthy of that. No question about it. Um, but these receivers, I mean, they haven't stepped up either. No, it's that – It's again, it's that proof of concept. We got all excited. I did. I was guilty of it. When we started seeing these names that, that Auburn got in the oh, yeah. portal, I was very excited with the receivers – and with Peyton Thorne, and it starts with the quarterback position. But you wonder if you were in a, would it be in a better situation right now if you just rode Robbie at the beginning of the year and you freeze try to pull the Malik Willis magic with Robbie and just so into him, do yeah. the play calling for him and run read option and ride with him and have Holden Gurn and bring it a backup. You know that's fine. You need a depth for the quarterback room. The receivers have been big swing and misses, but there's two. There's two. Vantage, there's two datum points when it comes to evaluations. It's evaluating these guys when they're in the portal on whether they're good enough to play for your program. And then when they get here, are they playing the right people from an evaluation standpoint also? Are they putting the right receivers out there? Are they putting the right quarterback out mm -hmm. there? Are they putting the right running back out there? Because I'm going to tell you right now, Jarquez Hunter, in the Jarquez Hunter we've seen the last two years, he may be hurt. So I want to yeah. kind of give him the benefit of the doubt, but Austin healthy has run better than him. Batty has run better than him. And Cobb, right now, Daryl, Brian Batty needs to be running back. Exactly. One. And that's an evaluation thing is, is are we misevaluating yeah. because of what Hunter did the last two years? Uh, again, the kid may be hurt. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. He doesn't look explosive. He looks tentative in the hole. So then why are you playing him? Why are you giving him more snaps over the other dudes? Um, Daryl, there, while, while you're on the topic, I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I, just yeah. while you're on this topic, I want to ask you another one. Who do mm -hmm. you feel more comfortable throwing a pass to right now, Luke Deal or Brandon Frazier? Brandon Frazier. It's not made a heck of a play me. on a fifth on a fifty fifty ball, a six eight lurch tight end going down the field and made a play on a yeah. ball that wide receivers haven't made all year on a fifty fifty ball, and then a nice play on the two yard line to have an awareness to spin and find the end zone when Robbie dumped it to him and catches the two-point conversion, gets in space, comes back to the ball for his quarterback because that was a On the, the two-point conversion, he was he was blocking, and then he felt yeah. it. He felt he the realized, space. Because Perkins, you know, murdered Cobb, no flag, right. and then they and then Frazier peeled off. I mean, so, yeah, yeah, again, so I loved Luke Deal. Great guitar player, good singer. But if Brandon Frazier is better than you, then Brandon Frazier needs to play. And that's what I'm talking about with some of this misevaluations. I don't know about the offensive line. It's too hard to tell. Um, from a defensive line standpoint, I think there's some guys that we were really high on that coming into this year that haven't pulled their weight either. So I don't know. But Who from specifically? An Who well, specifically I, I are you just, talking about? I, I've been disappointed in the way Jason Jones has played. Yeah, really you're not seeing always, much of him anymore. He, he's. I know he's a friend of the program. I, I love the kid, yeah. but I just – I don't know why he's not playing more. I don't know if it's a performance mm -hmm. thing, but I, I expected him to be a leader on defense and be more of a of a presence, and I can't find him. Sometimes he's not even in the game. So I don't know yeah. what that coaching decision is. Is he being misevaluated and not getting as many snaps as Justin Rogers and should be playing more? I don't know, but yeah. I thought he would have more of a presence 
in an impact than he has right now. Yeah, I do wonder if that's game plan related because maybe they like Rodgers to rush the passer a little bit more than Jason. I, I don't know. I don't know. But if Jason Jones takes up so much of the middle and has done such a good job run oh, stopping, you, which he has, I'm with you. why is he just falling off the face of the earth? I, it's a mystery to me, and I don't understand it. I, I just don't. The only defensive lineman I consistently notice, and and look, defensive line is defensive line. Unless you're a standout interior guy, you're only going to notice so much. But it's Marcus Harrison. There's a really big drop off after that. But early in the game, we saw Keldrick Falk a lot at defensive end because uh, due to injury. I mean, I think he's going to be the guy there now, and he wasn't a factor either. So it, it's just so many of these guys. Maybe Kite Auburn, was the glue, right? He was the glue to the defensive who knows? line. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> who knows? But uh, it's 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 just a tough, tough, tough situation. You look at you look at all these guys that are like the keys to the success of this team. A lot of the defensive backs, even some of the guys that are playing the front seven that I think are playing well, like Marcus Harris, and even these offensive linemen. I think Gunnar Britton is fantastic. I hate that he's at guard. I wish he was at tackle. I wish somebody else could play guard so he could play tackle because. I just think he's better than a Xavion Miller. No offense. I just do. A Xavion Miller will be very good. He's just raw. We knew that when he came in here. Right. But all these guys are about to leave. And so you're going to have to start over again at all these different position groups. I think you'll be in a little bit better spot than you were last December when the portal opens. But it's just frustrating. It's very, very frustrating. But, Daryl, I do think there is a perspective that we need to have moving forward. And I think these comments are going to make some people mad. So I need you to talk me off of it if I'm a crazy person. All right. All right. That's coming up in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, to a bunch of other parts. I don't know what they do. eBay Motors has them. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you need. Because eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. Yeah. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Daryl, going into the season, not many people expected Auburn to go to Texas A&M and win. Nobody expected Auburn to beat Georgia. And nobody expected Auburn to go to LSU. In fact, a lot of folks on this show included, I said there were three unwinnable games going into the season. Georgia, LSU, and Alabama. Then A&M was kind of one of those toss-up ones. I get that this loss was by a larger margin than we all expected. But most people would have guessed Auburn to be, what, three and three at this point? And that's exactly mm -hmm. that's exactly what they are, right? And when we did our final prediction show of the season, the final off-season pod, you and I pre uh, predicted the season. I said we'd lose four in a row, including Ole Miss next week. And I was ripped apart on message boards. But I think that's going to be correct. But I still said seven and five, Daryl. I still said seven and five, and I still think seven and five is possible. I said eight and four, and I think that's gone now. I'm hoping for six or six, six and six or seven and five. Here's why. Sure. Here's why. Your perspective is correct. I had Auburn at three and three at this point in the year as well. I had them beating Ole Miss to go to four and three, and then I thought they were going to go on a nice run. My concern is not that they're three and three, it's how they look and sure. how they got to three and three. They lost to a Texas A&M team that now has three losses. Okay, I mean we can, and I know one of them was to Alabama, but they got beat by Tennessee. They got lot. They got beat by Florida State. If A&M runs the table and goes nine and three, that's not a bad loss. If they go seven and five, eight and four, that loss does not look as quality as it did a couple weeks ago. They just got absolutely boat raced. I get it at home by LSU to a team that already has two losses on their schedule. Correct. LSU's lost two games. And right. to Ole Miss and to Florida State, and they struggled with Arkansas, who Auburn has to go on the road. So you're right, the, the proper balance. But here we are, halfway through the year, there's six games left. Auburn's going to be favored in three of those six. They have to win those. They have to win those three to get to six and six, not have a losing season, 
and get to a bowl game. To get to three games, those three games: New Mexico State, Mm -hmm. Mississippi State, and Vanderbilt. They have to win against Arkansas, um, Ole Miss, or Alabama. One of those three that they're not going to be favored in to get to a seven-win season. Is it feasible? Yes. But I've got to see something. Di- there needs to be some pixie dust sprinkled in the athletic complex for me to see when this team's going to change their DNA. They are who they are, as Dennis Green used to say, through the first six games of the season. Sure. So I don't, I don't know where it's going to come from. I do think six and six, just holding par, holding course from a perspective standpoint, you're correct. But how they got to three and three right now is what's concerning. I thought they were going to lose some games, but they were going to show offensive promise. The quarterback play was going to be better, and they were going to lose some games late because they were just going to get outscored. Yeah. I mean, fact of the matter is, though, a lot of the a lot of college football games aren't close, right? Like that. That's just kind of the way it is. Now, Georgia was close. Which, if you would have made me guess of the three, which one would be the closest of the three losses? I would not have guessed Georgia going into the year, which. You know, I thought that would maybe spark something. And hey, maybe maybe Auburn can take care of business at home. Who knows? Who knows? And let's and make no mistake about it, Cal is a bad football team, a very bad football Good point. team. And Auburn squeaked by. I'll take the Good win, point. but they they have done. They've lost every game. I think since since they lost since they lost to Auburn. I think Cal's a yeah. one or two win team right now. So looking at the, the totality of it. It's how they how we got to this three and three and what we've done to get here that's concerning. That can flip, but yeah. it better start with Saturday night at home against Ole Miss. Cause if Auburn lays another egg like they did last night and, and gets boat raced and puts gifts up 40 points, I don't know, and scores 15, you know, 17 points. I mean, I don't know with the two defenses between LSU and Ole Miss, whose defense is better, but I just have some concerns that through six games, we've seen zero improvement. Zippo. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen progress on the offensive side of the ball. And the defense, people will say they were spent, they were tired, there's injuries. I don't care. Defensively, the middle of the field was open all night, and you got 48 scored on you. So don't give me the I'm, – you know, the defense played solid. No, they didn't. They give up 48. I know mm-hmm. LSU's average is 48, 45. They play solid if you keep LSU in the 30s. They didn't. They almost they almost hung a half a hundred on us. Right. So no, yeah. they didn't. They they let I, us down I get too. I get yeah. it. And that I mean, I think some of that does go to the game plan, right? They came out trying to pass the ball, which is not that's not how you prevent that from happening. It's just I, I can't wrap my brain around it, Daryl. It just doesn't make any sense to me how this coaching staff is handling the roster and what they're game planning. I I just, I can't imagine. I can't imagine anybody on the offense is thrilled about how they're handling the quarterback situation. I can't imagine anybody on the offense, including the wide receivers are thrilled with how they're passing the football. I, I just, we talk about coaches needing to put guys in situations to succeed and there's not one player on offense that I can point to and say they're doing a good job putting that player into uh, in a position to succeed. Not one. Well, I, it, it's funny. I, I'll push back on that and say there is, but it's such limited touches. Jeremiah Cobb is getting put in situations with those okay. little sure. flip flip passes and the, and the, the third and running the, back. Sure, yeah, I get whatever it. Whatever he does, the, the you know what what is it uh, the whatever that that. Ontario McCaleb used to run and all yeah, that. the it's jet like sweep, the jet, the jet motion sweep. stuff. Thank yeah, you. I had right. a brain cramp because I'm still so. We've peeved. been through a lot tonight. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah. So, but yeah, th- those, he, he is being put in positions to do well, but you're right. Third sure. string running back in garbage time. But yeah, that's it. Or like, or when Robbie's in, they use him when Robbie's in, in his I did like, I will say this. I'm going to try to find one positive thing to say before I go to bed, to, you know, before, before I hit the sack. Okay. I did like them throwing. I we I've been calling for it all year. They threw off that read option with Robbie some tonight a couple times. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. And it, it was a touchdown just, pass off of it. Threw a touchdown pass. Had a big first down um, where it looks like he's just going to run, or it's a read option, and he throws off of it. It's his third option. 
Uh, he can keep it. He could hand it off, and he threw off it. Thank God they finally did that, and it was successful. Yeah, I, I love the I love the direct snap to Jarquez Hunter in a in yeah. goal line slash short yardage situation. I was a fan of that. After that, uh, kind the of, slants, the back to back slants got me very excited. N number yeah. one, it was a slant. Did they go number back two, to Kendra Brown after that? Twice, <laughs> two times in a row. And Jesse Palmer said, "I'm so glad." They did that because there's this notion that you can't go back to something when it works right away. And they did. They went back to back, different sides of the field, slant patterns to Cam Brown. Yeah, and but then, I'm asking, did they go back to Cam Brown? Oh, no, no. He was on the side. No. I, that was the my cereal, had. When I eat my cereal tomorrow, he's going to be on the side of my milk carton. Yeah. He disappeared after that. Where'd he go? Brandon Head Frazier sponsor. had four targets. Jay Fair had four targets. Jarquez had three. I like that. Cam Brown had two, the two off of the RPO slant. Caleb Burton had two early, and that was it. And caught both of them. And Cam Brown caught both of his. That's what's uh, frustrating. Malcolm to me. caught what? his only target. The Revaldo was thrown to four times. He only caught it once. It's just like, yeah. what is going on? And then go Shane Hooks twice. was targeted too, but that's not on this mm. sheet. I'll have that later. But it seems like every throw to Shane Hooks is a waste now at this yeah. point. Yeah. Yep. So much huh. pain. All right. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go. Yeah, to bed. I said something positive so that I would not lay there I'm wide awake, staring at the ceiling, just furious. These are tough game. I'm, I, I may watch a little more to kind of decompress, but yeah, that was, it, it's frustrating yeah. that we're not further along, that Almer's not further along than I thought they would. Daryl, I think, that's I think your internet's going. getting tired too, but uh, Daryl, if you're able to, there you are. If you're <laughs> able to, uh, how, how can people check out everything you've got going on? Follow me on Twitter, DAP6410. And then I'm on Monday mornings and Tuesday afternoons, various shows on the Auburn Network. Be sure to click that subscribe button. It really helps out the show. Please like this video, even though the topic was not a fun one. We'll be back tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.